Before we get started, I must warn you that this video will contain mentions of violence and suicide. If either of these topics are sensitive for you, please take that into consideration. Thank you. Citizens of the world, hello. Today I'd like to talk about some of the lows that come hand in hand with being a leader. From personal experience, I can say that a low is something that happens when you abuse the position of power with which you have been entrusted. When a leader completely disregards everything they stand for and acts in a way that is so disgraceful, they'd be better off behind bars than leading a group of people. Oppression is the enemy of mankind. Those who have chosen to lead and those to whom we have given the responsibility to do so are those in whom we have put our faith. The majority of people today are reliant on a stern and guiding hand to lead them to their salvation. They follow this leader, completely trusting that they have nothing but the best in mind for them. But some leaders do not treat their followers as they should. They act out of self-interest, disregarding what is good for the people. Such leaders are not fit to lead. I myself have acted in such a disreputable way. It's the worst thing I've ever done. But I would do it again if the need arose. I have learned and grown from my experience, as can others. We may be in this state now, but there is always room for change. My personal experience with this position occurred during the early days of my activism, one of the first times I had been entrusted to lead a protest. Things were going peacefully and I expected all of the attendees to act appropriately. However, one of the protesters, whose name shall be withheld, soon started to take matters into their own hands. They became rowdy, and soon resorted to violence. It was at this point that several others, seeing the first person's example, became violent also. Many bystanders were hurt, couldn't stand to see them injured, especially as they had no affiliation to our group, had not agreed to take the risks that the activists were taking. To have anyone who had not willingly agreed to stand with us injured was unacceptable. I made the mistake of trusting these people to control their actions, and they betrayed that trust. My trust. I took it upon myself to send a tip to the authorities about the offending protester. Know that I did not consult anyone else about my actions. I alone had misplaced my trust, and I alone should have known better. Turning them in was my way of ensuring that there would be no more incidents like this one in the future, of making it clear that I would not tolerate a lack of discipline in our movement. I intended to make it known that justice should be public so that all parties involved, myself included, should be assessed. After the police had been notified, I made our community aware of the actions I had taken. They needed to see the consequences and understand my motivation. The charge sheet was heavy indeed. Public order offences, numerous counts of property damage and assault, occasioning actual bodily harm and one count of grave bodily harm. I mean, it's a matter of luck that the victim was not killed. The fact that the culprit was intoxicated, a fact that I was unaware of at the time, but only makes me regret my own lack of vigilance all the more bitterly, only aggravated the charges. They were looking at a lengthy prison sentence should they be found guilty. I later found out that the culprit committed suicide in detainment. I was the reason the person ended their own life. And for months I was at war with myself, knowing that my actions had caused this circumstance. Was I, on this small scale, any better than those systems that we seek to eradicate? Had I abused my power, what could I have done to prevent this, rather than simply seek to punish after the fact? For a time, I stepped away from my responsibilities, unsure of how I should continue. But I came to the conclusion that sacrifices must be made for the cause, 
Measures must be taken to assure that our members do not act in this way, and not people to lose control. We need people who act out of passion, yes, but not blindly. To allow someone to act against our cause again would be to spit on it myself. There can be no leniency. Mercy cannot be shown. There will be justice for every unjust act. Those who work hard will have nothing to fear. Our cause is a great one. Our cause is a worthy one. There will come a time when there is absolute trust between leaders and followers, and both sides of the social contract will be followed implicitly. This seems like a bad time to mention love. I will anyway. Love. Love for ourselves. Love for our people. Love for the things that make us human. And with that love comes justice. And with that, the world will be at peace. In the future, the future that we're fighting for, the Earth will be radiant. There will be no longer any reason for us to kill. Humanity will finally learn how to love. There will come a day when everything, everyone, not just here, not just our cause, but humanity will love. And there will come a day when everything will be harmony and concord and light and joy and life. Have faith. It will come. And that's why we're here. So don't be afraid. It may not seem possible with the chaos and the corruption of the world. But one day, one day soon, you will enjoy an ideal future. Thank you for watching, and may you not make the same mistakes I did.